Hey YouTube, how's it going? Coming to you from Malaysia today, the country that's full of culture, food, and the friendliest people you'll ever meet. This is my 10-day plan to Malaysia. To get started, one of the first things you should do when you arrive is to get a SIM card. As long as you have a phone that's not tied to a carrier, you can use a SIM to connect to the internet while on your visit. For less than 10 US dollars, you can find a package that will meet your needs. Some of Malaysia's major telco networks are Maxis Hotlink, DG, and U-Mobile. In terms of what apps you should download beforehand, I highly recommend Google Maps as you can use it to navigate the country. You should also download the Grab app, which is Malaysia's version of Uber. Not only can you use it to call for rides, you can also use it to order food. It is very easy to set up. Just open the app, register an account, link your credit card, and you're good to go. Also, if you're planning to visit Singapore, you can use the same Grab app over there as well. As always, you can find helpful links to all the passes and tickets that are going to be discussed in this video down in the comments. On our first day, we're going to be out and about in Kuala Lumpur. FYI, the city is also referred to using the short form of KL. When you're here, you'll want to consider getting the KL Travel Pass, which lets you have unlimited travel on a subway, convenient for moving around the city. The pass also comes with either a single trip or a return trip from the airport to the city. I would recommend getting the pass with a return trip included, because it's convenient and it's a good value for money. Prices for the KL Travel Pass are 80 ringgit or 17 USD for the single trip from the airport, while the one with the return trip will cost 125 ringgit or about 27 USD per person. Check out my link in the comments to purchase the pass, but you can also get them from the airport when you arrive. Your first official stop in KL should be at the Petronas Twin Towers, one of Malaysia's most iconic landmarks. These are the tallest twin towers in the world, and you're free to take photos from the ground most people would go up to the observation deck on the 86th floor. Why? To see the best views of the city. Tickets for adults cost 98 ringgit or 21 USD, while tickets for kids are 50 ringgit or 11 USD. At the base of the Twin Towers is the Surya Shopping Mall, home to a huge number of famous local and international brands. This mall is as premium as it gets, so make sure your wallet is prepared for it. There's also plenty of restaurants that serve local and international cuisine for you to try, so the sky is really the limit here, guys. Food is celebrated widely in Malaysia, and if I were you, I'd take this chance to try something new. Next, we head on to Independence Square, or known locally as Merdeka Square, one of the most historical sites in Malaysia. You'll find the Independence Stadium, or Stadium Merdeka nearby, and it is here that Malaysia gained its independence on the 31st of August in 1957. It is also where the annual Independence Day Parade still takes place. When you're there, there's a few other things you can admire, like the Sultan Abdul Samad building, which is home to many of Malaysia's government departments, but on the outside, the building is absolutely stunning to look at. Our last stop for the day will be at Central Market. This place is a hub for locals and tourists, as it features a number of shops and stores selling excellent local gifts, local foods, clothes, handicrafts, and a handful of very interesting antique stores. We start off our second day in Malaysia with a stroll around KL's Perdana Botanical Gardens. This amazing oasis that's smack dab in the middle of Kuala Lumpur is a wonderful place to take a break from the hectic pace of the city. The gardens are also home to deer and a bird park, with various flower gardens to explore, making this a popular place to relax. The gardens are open daily from 7am to 10pm, and best of all, the botanical gardens are free of charge. Yes, you can just walk right in. But the butterfly park and bird park in the gardens do charge entrance fees. They are completely optional, so you can explore the rest of the gardens as you please. Next, we'll explore another historical part of the city, a place known as Little India. There are many things to see and do here as you take in the sights and sounds. One of the most notable attractions here is the Sri Kandaswami Kovul Hindu Temple. Nestled in this urban jungle, the temple is a stark difference with its colourful design. Both the exterior and interior are equally as colourful, and you'll be flanked on both sides with various gods of the Hindu faith as you enter the temple. For dinner, we can head on to Bukit Bintang, one of the major parts of the city that's dedicated to Western tourists, with a wide variety of shopping, restaurants, bars, hotels and nightclubs to experience. It's what makes KL such a modern metropolis and should be experienced at least once. No matter what your tastes are, you're gonna find it here. 
Today, we're taking a day trip out of KL to the amazing Batu Caves. Outside of India, this is one of the most sacred Hindu sites in the world. And during the Thaipusam festival, which takes place at the beginning of every year, it draws the biggest crowds in the region. You'll know it when you arrive as you'll be greeted by the giant golden statue of Lord Murugan, as well as the multicolored steps that lead into the caves. As this is a sacred site, you'll need to be modest with your clothes. Shoulders and knees should be covered, but in case you forget, you can always rent a sarong, which is a long cloth used to wrap around the body. Entry to the caves is free, but you can always get a guided tour for 35 ringgit or about 7 USD. The easiest way to get here from central Kuala Lumpur is to hop on the KTM commuter train to the nearby Batu Cave station. The ride takes 25 minutes each way and costs about 2 ringgit. No trip to Malaysia is complete without visiting Penang. Famous for its street art, temples and great food, there's plenty to love here. Geographically, Penang is a big island that's connected by two bridges. But it's far from laid back, with city life and stuff to do that rivals that of KL itself. Start off by going to the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Georgetown. Chock full of colonial buildings and a wide variety of local food to try, you can easily spend your full two days here just exploring the city. You can take a tour to see many if not all of the street art mural that's found in the heritage zone of Penang. I've left some links in the comments in case you're interested. The weather in Malaysia can get really hot, averaging about 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. So while you're here, make sure to pack enough liquids and maybe a hat or bring an umbrella to keep yourself protected. The Penang Peranakan Museum was a home of a typical Baba Nyonya family. This is a culture that's unique to certain cities along Singapore, Malacca and Penang. The museum showcases how the typical wealthy family lived at a time with over a thousand antiques housed inside, each detailing a certain part of the daily lives for the Baba Nyonya culture. Alternatively, you can also head to the photogenic Blue Mansion, another locally renowned site. It features many aspects of history and culture that's unique to Penang. There are two daily tours that take place every day that you can join to explore the many areas of the mansion. For the full experience, you can also book a night stay here. Rooms normally start at 130 USD a night, but prices can change based on the different room types that you pick. Today is going to be another fun-filled day in Penang as we head out bright and early to Penang Hill. The easiest way up is via the train which costs 30 ringgit or $6.50 US for adults and 15 ringgit or 3 USD for kids. The train runs as early as 6.30 am so try to come here by 7 before the crowds arrive. At the top, you'll see stunning views of the entire island and since you're up so high, the weather is a few degrees cooler than on the ground. There's a new attraction called the Habitat that lets you get up even higher, which includes the treetop wall and canopy wall. The Habitat standard entrance pass will cost you 60 ringgit or 13 USD, but there's also a family combo to consider for added attractions and savings. Afterwards, we're heading to the famous Kaloxi Temple. The easiest way to get here from Penang Hill is to just book a taxi or call for a grab car on your grab app. While Penang has tons of other temples, none of them come close to this one, simply because of the 7-story pagoda that contains up to 10,000 statues of Buddha, as well as the towering statue of the Goddess of Mercy, which you might have spotted all the way up from Penang Hill. There is no entrance fee to visit the temple, but make sure you wear your most comfortable walking shoes, as there are a lot of steps, and you'll need to bring plenty of water to keep yourself hydrated. Before the end of the day, we'll head on over to Batu Feringi, the famous tourist spot on the island with the most accessible stretch of beach. There are some things you can do here such as taking a horseback ride or renting a jet ski, but the real attraction here is having a delicious sunset dinner by the beach. Ipoh is probably the least known spot amongst foreign visitors, which is a shame because there's many natural caves and limestone cliffs to explore. The incredible cave temples and colonial city center are one of the main reasons why anyone should visit. A prime example is the Kalok Tong Temple, which sits inside a cave. You'll find many deities of the Buddhist faith and Chinese culture here, as well as some impressive stalactite formations. Ipoh is also very well known for its own variety of food, which is different from the ones that you can find in Penang or in KL. I recommend going to try some chicken rice with Ipoh's delicious bean sprouts. And there's no restaurant more popular than the Ongki Chicken Rice Restaurant. Soya bean curd pudding is another must-have dessert in Ipoh. Known locally as Tao Fu Fa, it is made with spring water giving it a very unique fragrance and flavor. You can have it just as it is or request to have some brown sugar syrup on top of it for that extra sweetness. 
Head on to the restaurant called Funny Mountain for your fix of Taufu Fa. For the next two days, we're exploring some of the best beaches that Malaysia has to offer. That's why we're taking a short one-hour flight to Terengganu. Located on the east coast, this is where you'll find the majestic Perhentian Islands, a beautiful archipelago of white sand beaches, coconut trees and beautiful waters just begging for you to jump in. Flights here from either Penang or Ipoh typically cost less than 200 ringgit or about 45 USD per person. When you arrive, you'll find two main islands here called Kachil Island and Basar Island. If you're looking for the right island to visit with more people around but with cheaper accommodation options, definitely pick Kachil Island. Don't get us wrong, there's still things to see and do on the other, bigger Basar Island but that's catered towards families and upscale travelers. So if you're on a budget, then Kachil Island is the right choice. One of the best things to do here is to trek through the jungle, which gives you the chance to encounter some of the local wildlife. There's a lot of people on these jungle paths and no guides are needed. You can explore as much of the island as you'd like at your own pace. With the beautiful waters of the Perintian Islands beckoning, there's always a good time for a relaxing day on the beach as you soak in the warm Malaysian sun. When you're ready, jump into the waters for a swim at any time, or even go on a scuba diving tour to see some truly breathtaking sights of corals and sea marine life such as sharks, sea turtles and lots of fish. The city of Malacca is located on the southern side of Malaysia and it is a true melting pot of cultures. Once upon a time, the city was colonized by the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British. Its effects and influences can still be found today in its local food, building designs and the language. You might think that you've seen it all after spending almost 10 days in Malaysia, but think again. Our first stop for the day is the Windmill Dutch Square, one of the most famous spots in the city with its colonial era design. It is a prime spot for photos going up on your social media for sure. Take the time to explore the area as there are a few museums around that shed some light into the history of the city. The ruins of St. Paul's Church is another famous attraction. It was built in 1521 by a Portuguese nobleman who, after surviving a rough storm out at sea, believed that he owed his life to the Virgin Mary. The church is free to enter and explore as you please, but it is set at the top of a hill, so expect to do some climbing. As always, there's a lot of new food to try here in Malacca and one of the best places to find them is at the Jonker Street Night Market. Visited by locals and tourists, the market cannot be missed with mouth-watering dishes like the chicken rice ball and a wide assortment of nyonya kueh to try. Unfortunately, the market is only open on Fridays and the weekends, so make sure to plan your trip. For our final day in Malaysia, we're going to have an amazing dim sum breakfast at one of the many restaurants in Malacca. Dim sum features a wide variety of dishes served on little plates and you can eat as little or as much as you want. One highly recommended restaurant is this one, known for its excellent food and service. We can spend the rest of the day exploring other parts of the city or start heading back towards KL for our flight home. Those of you who are looking to continue the journey down south to Singapore can head towards Johor Bahru, just 3 hours drive away from Malacca to get over the causeway and into Singapore. Join me next as I show you how to spend 5 days there and with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.